Hi everyone, Greg from Greg's, Greg's Whiskey Guide here, your host for more uh, in-depth reviews and for my opinion, of course, about some whiskies. Here we have a kind of a bonus or let's say sequel, bonus is more sympathetic <laughs> term, uh, about my face-to-face -face, uh, um, blended whiskies from Scotland series. Um, the series is over, not definitively, but for uh, a moment, but as I had the opportunity, uh, thanks to people I'm going to mention in a minute, um, to get a sample, I could uh, compare it as it's the mo probably one of the most recent one, six months or so, uh, I have with a bottle of mine which is a bit older and of course we're talking today about Blue Label Johnny Walker the famous worldwide successful but also uh, disappointing for some uh, and also a bit versatile if not subject to as usual unfortunately uh, in mass market production even if it's a limited edition, subject to batch variations and also to supply and demand. Um, so, uh, in 2018, I attended, um, I did an article about um, on my website, gregswhiskeyguy.com. I will put a link below, of course, uh, where I had a masterclass about Johnny Walker brand, the whole brand focusing for the masterclass tastings on the uh, blue label expression three ver three expressions uh, two variations of this and also another high-end whiskey from this uh, uh, blending company belonging to Diageo um, then at this occasion I uh, decided to do a full uh, in-depth topic in which I put around 20 tasting notes of mine of different batches, different versions, a uh, lot of things I tried over the years about Johnny Walker. So please check it out, it's a lot of work there. And a lot of pictures including some rare uh, bottlings uh, in, in pictures and explanation about uh, a lot of things. I'm not going to go in depth now into Johnny Walker, the br main brand, uh, just a few things though and more focus on the blue label expression. So uh, you're going to find uh, links to my Johnny Walker red label face-to-face -face comparison old versus new so in which there's more about the brand history but to make it very shortly uh, in 1820 this is the official date on the bottles of Johnny Walker the brand is is uh, is out is uh, released and 1850 only first trials uh, about their blends are uh, released publicly but it's only in 1857 that it started to work a bit more with something called Old Highland Whiskey which will later on uh, become uh, the black label 12 years old in 1906 a special whole old highland red label was released and it's a precursor for the red label in 1909 uh, the three red black and at the time it was a white label are released and um, it's only 1992 that the blue label is released uh, each bottle is individually uh, marked by a reference number, so uh, it, it is not a batch number, but it, it's number that can let you uh, check out maybe with the company uh, more in, in details. Um, 
what can I say else? 1992, the Blue Label started its career under the name of the oldest, not Blue Label. Um, at the time it was advertised, there were content from 25 to 50 years old. Uh, it is difficult to know nowadays the real age of it. I will come back to this when I'll do the comparison. Uh, but what is sure is that they're older whiskies than the rest of the range. Uh, I mean uh, 5 to 18 years old as, as it is. Uh, does it have a lot of older whiskies? That's the question. Um, something maybe to note that the, the I did damage a bit the uh, the protection here, so there was a wrapped with this something. But it comes with a, a little thing here, metallic, which is a reminder of the date, eighteen o two. 20. I don't know if you can see it. And on the other side, the initials Johnny Walker. Um, it is sold and uh, sticked under this this uh, thing, so it is supposed to be a secure uh, way of selling you something that would not be fake. The um, green tainted glass is as well as the, the whiskey itself tries to be a replica of the 19th century uh, old Highland uh, whiskies from the, uh, the company with some old content. Then um, the advertising focuses on uh, yeah, it comes with a luxury, I uh, forgot to say, luxury box like this, luxury, this is relative, but uh, which is in two parts, is the second part. Um, and this interesting leaflet, which is full of a lot of marketing thing, but also sometimes interesting pictures about a blending lab, you can see here with hundreds of samples, uh, old duty-free warehouses as well, well, lots of things. Not too much, of course, John Walker is portrayed here, portrayed here. Not too much real information, I'm afraid, so I had to check out on the internet and on my book uh, collection to give you some more details. Um, main components in terms of single molds, they're not disclosed completely. Um, we are given officially the information that they are Ben Rinis, Cardew, single mold from Diageo as well, very sweet Speyside, Kleinlich for the Highlands inside that comes into the composition. Another Highland malt, Royal Lochnagar, that often we forget. Uh, I have a suspicion because uh, the shareholders in the 80s were Johnny Walker, so uh, I have a big suspicion Glenn Moore, a closed distillery, is in there as well. And it is officially known that Brora and Port Allen, this is an independent version, so uh, are also inside. Of course, closed distilleries are in small amount. Um, Port Dundas and Cameron Bridge are the key single grains in the Blue Label. According to the different versions, the, the, the whiskies that come inside, the malts and the grains can be different, mind you. Um, this is a version of 43% that was gifted to me uh, 10 years ago by a friend who well, has passed away since. And this, he was an American uh, friend, so uh, this is a US release, uh, which is very interesting because 75 CL instead of 70 in, uh, in France and in most parts of Europe. And 40, as you can see, here's 43% ABV. 
which makes uh, some quite difference with the most recent ones. Also, the other difference is even if we are entering into the 2000 era, and I said it before in my previous video about Johnny Walker, so I'm not going to be very long, there are most probably older content in this one than in the uh, most recent ones, and it shows on the tasting. Um, at this point, I have to show you, um, but I will show you them face to face, don't worry. This is a sample I've been provided kindly by a new drum drinker. Uh, well, me, I sent them, uh, it was supposed to be blind, but it failed. Um, a sample of my bottle. So we did a zoom tasting with a with couple of the things. We wanted to be a bit private uh, because we, do, I, we don't speak uh, so often and we didn't met, we were supposed to met. And because of COVID, uh, lots of us didn't met this year and even at the end of last year. Um, so we did a private zoom earlier on and again thanks for them for the sample and we compared the two and it was interesting to see that both of us uh, Anthony, Nikki and me were not exactly on the same page about uh, the most recent one but also about this one but I think we both agreed uh, it was def definitely uh, a bit different and probably more refined on this version than on the most recent reduced to 41. Now in terms of colors which is very relative considering Alas this blue label as the rest of the range is, n is chill filtered and caramel colored which is a shame especially for this one uh, which is supposed to bear uh, quite some old content we find something is not completely clear okay never mind so this is the US one release and this is the uh, hope I'm not confused them okay the wider is the 40% and as you can see with all that caramel coloring stuff it almost looks the same Mine may be uh, a bit 40%, okay? Maybe a bit um, darker, but it's psychological, <laughs> let's say. Um, to finish about the blue label before getting into the tasting, um, the blue label, like I said, exists since 1992 in the 40% uh, version. 43 for some markets like in, in the US but it did also exist later on in uh, cast strength expressions one being very rare in in uh, um, uh, Baccarat I think it's Baccarat uh, the glass company uh, decanter and it's supposed to be 60% ABV which is very weird because you can you still can see 50 percent uh 60 percent abv uh 50 years old whiskies and i saw something uh released recently that was very old and uh, was very high abv but you can only reach this if you use racked warehouses or heated warehouses to increase the uh the degree in some climates or to maintain it the highest as possible plus this is this is uh, something that can be considered as uh, a relevant information because prior to around year 2000 all the DCL that became the AGO distilleries um, were putting the uh, spirit into casks at over 65% ABV around 70 so it's only around two th year 2000, uh, approximately, that they uh, put it down to 63.5, which is the standard um, agreement between the distilleries to, to uh, put the spirit, the new make, uh, into casks. Um, this also allows them to exchange distillate in bulk uh, or uh, 
in uh, one or two years old in casks with the other companies for the blending uh, purposes right so um, so there is this version this uh, version in cast strength was once released uh, some year ago I don't know if there's a date in there I'm not sure um, but this is on my website anyway this I had the chance to be uh, offered this bottle but only the end of the bottle <laughs> by a friend who's a retailer uh, to try it and to have my opinion because he liked it a lot and bought several bottles of this on travel retail before alas it was too late uh, yeah we're gonna have to talk about price as well I forgot this uh, not the US edition but the 40% current edition retails around from 165 euros to around 250 but if I see the French prices it's around uh, currently available around 180 euros so probably 150 pounds something like that 200 dollars I don't know exactly the change well this one was 250 uh, probably 10 years ago less than 10 years ago unfortunately the cast rank edition which is very good uh, in my opinion I only have this left if you want to see the the color I don't know if I can put it there it's still quite light uh, has been rebranded and when we had the master class uh, a few years ago it has been rebranded in the ceramic decanter and it got uh, its price jumping up to 420 or 450 euros plus it's opaque so you don't see so I find it very disappointed being because I couldn't get me one now so I'm very happy to have this one I shared it a bit but I have to be cautious because I think this is a very interesting profile and I think it's a bit better than the 2020 uh, I, I, I had the last thing about Port Allen maybe um, yeah and it was called a willow the decanter white decanter version of the cast string uh, nickname is willow um, in 2017 yeah it's the cask uh, edition um, but I think they were before as well um, now Johnny Walker released three sequels or three limited even more limited releases of the blue label um, in 2017 they started a series called ghost and rare to highlight with a bit more content and not so much in my opinion of closed distilleries now I told you that in this one there's already some br supposed to be already some Brora and Port Ellen but bear in mind that as the profile uh, the, the, the casks um, stock they have Diageo have is decreasing and that's why I think they relaunched also the distilleries Brora and Port Allen last year. The profile of the whiskies has changed over the years, uh, and Brora and Port Allen has become a bit less recognizable, at least for the cask probably that goes into this, than they were probably 20 years ago. Um, and I have a 33 years old Port Ellen here uh, to demonstrate it that you can see it in a happy new year live I did I try I tried this and reviewed this in, in the uh, during the live show um, the profile has been greener becoming a bit greener uh, a bit less sexy on the floral side and uh, and uh, gently maritime floral side then I'm basing what I say only on three or four expressions I've tried official and indie uh, so you have to take it with a pinch of salt but uh, the profile is changing a bit for instance you can try it in big peat where there's a tiny proportion of pot elm it doesn't really shine so much in my opinion and that's what I felt when they did uh, 
In 2017, they did a Brora edition of the Johnny Walker Ghost and Rare. And in 2018, and not 19 as I saw on Whiskey Base, it's a mistake. Uh, in 2018, the Port Ellen uh, release was out. And in 2019, uh, the Glenury Royal uh, was also released. And I'm happy because I love this distillery, which is closed and absolutely not known of the, the main audience. Uh, just the whiskey lovers, aficionados know, know, know this one. Um, the two, the first uh, 2017 Brora uh, release, uh, Brora highlighting release were bottled 46%, but the Port Allen and Glenary Royal were bottled at 43.8% ABV. Honestly, I tried the three. I found the three good, and I reviewed the Brora on the uh, on the. Uh, we'll put a li link for the, the the website topic about Johnny Walker where I reviewed it. Um, the Port Allen was nice, the Glenary was nice, but I don't think then so much impact uh, these distilleries are into the, the final mix of, uh, of the blend. So, And often, for instance, the Brora, I found the nose way more interesting than the palate. Don't get me wrong, these are good whiskies, uh, probably more carefully made than the current Blue Label at 40%, in my opinion, because it's a limited release. Uh, and because it targets the collectors of these distilleries, of course. Uh, now, Brora and Port Ellen gonna reopen, so good news. The Glenary Royal, I'm afraid not. Um, so I won't recommend to people who wants to try a Port Ellen, a Brora and Glenary Royal to buy these whiskies for that purpose. Just saying, because I may be frustrated. Okay, too, too long on, on this probably. Um, now we're gonna try the two side by side. I, I let them stay for a while already and um, I'm going to tell you my thoughts after that. Okay. We're going to start by the 40% though. In my mind, I should start by the 43 and older because I think it's less harsh than the, the new one. Now, to give you more perspectives about this comparison in the again link in the description below um, I tried others a few years ago um, blue label at 30% uh, reduction uh, releases so uh, there's another one that we tried at the beginning of the master class so from 2017 I think probably it is different than this one, the 2020 from New Drum Drinker. So, and it is different different from mine, so it's difficult to really... There's some notes in common though. The focus on old uh, single malts, um, Highlanders and old leafy tea-ish green notes that probably this doesn't appeal to the uh, younger audience or less experimented audience, if I may say, sorry. Uh, but also the problem is something that like, uh, let me let the bottle here, something as refined or supposed to be refined as Blue Label. The problem is that, uh, yeah, less reflection. The problem is that, how can I say that? It is targeted to an international luxury audience and I think mainly for Asian and US market but more probably Asian. Uh, so it, it has to be melted, it has to be dark, it has to be uh, in some ways not far from an old cognac in, in the spirit of blending it I mean. There is everything melted, everything a fusion of the flavors something w in which nothing really shines out, like the, the Shivas 12, like the Shivas 21, the Royal Salute. 
So the problem with this is to, to let the flavors shine, you have to give it some uh, power ABV wise and you have to let it the most unadulterated and with a blue label at least recently not my bottle they do bury it a bit into E150A and chill filtering and some probably tired and overcharged casks in my opinion and in in certain ways it ruins it it ruins the, the the intention to do something very sophisticated very good and that stands out uh, our blend cannot be beat was the moto in 1888 i'm sorry but it is beaten by some indie bottlers blends so even a Caden head 20 years old is more interesting than this not my bottle but the current ones my opinion once again okay I'm gonna try the noses of the two like I do always in this series and then taste the two and then with uh, some drops of water okay right off the bat very melted some caramel natural and unnatural some burnt wood I get some licorice in the background as a structure also some glue note that was appearing in the first time we tried it with new drum drinker uh, all the glue I don't have it now which is rather good You know, these things need to breathe. You don't open up the bottle and drink it like a cowboy. You need 50 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes in the glass probably before. Because even if I don't really believe nowadays that the older content is 50 years old or it is tired cask of 50 years old, there's probably over 18 or 20 years old content in there uh, in a big proportion. And that shows that shows but not as much as it should and especially I would like Port Ellen to shine more but they did add a bit more in the Port Ellen release but not enough for me to uh, make it really uh, a good value 400 euros and often now in secondary market only those three ghosts and rare uh, are of course, for someone like me, if I've, I'm gifted these bottles, especially the Port Allen one, I will be very happy because I'm, I'm a Port Allen uh, fan. But uh, all in all, uh, uh, value-wise, it's very expensive. Okay. I have some baked apple, apples and pears. slight hint of smoke in the background very tiny okay not much more now on to the my bottle here from 10 years before and 43 hmm instantly a difference uh, while I remember I had the mirror sugar in the the old one uh, I mean in the 2021 I have this more visible here visible noseable <laughs> in this one but some kind of rummish impression on the, on the both by the way you know some old navy rums are not so different than this but yeah I get more more complexity on the on the green tea notes black tea earl grey over infused earl grey uh, maybe some green tea on the background some old mushrooms something a bit foresty that might come from this kind of malts I think or or if it's from old stock of, of the royal lochka
yeah burnt caramel but more fresh caramel and natural caramel than than burnt caramel oh my god this is beautiful i have to say some candied fruit ripe fruit Diffi difficult to describe honestly which ones i mean might be some old sherry style hints of coffee dark coffee roasted coffee Yeah, honey, manuka honey, um, some heather honey, and uh, let's say in the second ground. Highland Park, could it have some Highland Park? I doubt, but uh, we never know. Mm. Very pleasant, some background, floral notes in the background as well. This one is super complex. This of probably uh, uh, 30 minutes uh, of air um, and maybe a bigger glass, but there would be still uh, have some concentration on the top of it. I never tried it with a wine glass. Maybe I should. Okay, so uh, it beats the 2020 on the nose uh, by far but not it's not like it was an all another family it stays in the family now tasting it neat Oof, there's some artificial note that i don't like that comes across again cannot really say what it is trying to recalibrate Yeah, something between the, the, the glue, the uh, some kind of solventy but subdued, caramelish and burnt wood at the same time. Okay, now the, the palette. Okay, the sample has a bit evolved with some air. We did do that session a few weeks ago, I think. What annoys me right away is the sugar, residual sugar impression, because they don't allow, they're not allowed to add sugar, mind you, but the sucre residuel in French, it's what comes across after distillation, after the maturation that you can find in a bottle things that should be going away with time or not be there right from the start but alas as there even big brands i remember some young glenn farkless that was absolutely undrinkable supermarket shelf low shelf stuff absolutely undrinkable giving me headaches um, probably some five years old seven eight years old with a Honestly, that bottle, uh, I, I should have been giving it to a laboratory to analyze it. I'm almost 100% sure there was sugar added, but it's not allowed in by the SWA. It's another story. It was very weird. So it's not an unpleasant impression, but it's like uh, if the complexity was toned down a, a lot because of the E150A uh, heavy-handed with E150A and burnt wood with caramelized um, flavors. Maybe the grain component, bear in mind it's 75 around percent of, of this is, is grain whiskey. So maybe the grain whiskey casks are not the best or are a bit tired as well. Okay, now some better honey notes. 
again honey demerara sugar they're a bit covering the uh, the old whiskey uh, flavors the old malts that I talked earlier on on the nose all these green components these uh, fruity components floral as well there's a bit there is a bit tight and um, kept on the back side and it's frustrating now on to the 2010 US release at 43% the nose I told you already it gets better and better Slangeva or cheers because it's a US addition to our American friends and youtubers and else While I'm doing this it's because it needs to be oxygenized to deliver fully its flavors at least in an analysis so I'm chewing it it's a bit short still 43 percent it's not a 55.8 I think 46 or 48 could be great for this reference but also non chill filtering but the uh, main audience do want apparently chill filtering and they do want their caramel especially in Asia this is even a bit too light for Asian market for instance cognac they don't they refuse all uh, stocks that are shipped there if they're not caramel colored uh, and heavily caramel colored I've been told that in uh, when I was in uh, in cognac a few years ago and in some professional visits let's say so it's better but it's still frustrating some mushrooms green maybe I'm influenced by the because I tried it on the river side on, on the, the other side when we did our uh, face to face if I remember well and it was better so probably it, <laughs> this did pollute a bit my palate if I may say sorry guys I'm gonna try to uh, come back to it my first drums of the day because very special you have to be careful with these okay more natural and unnatural caramel coffee the marrow sugar definitely a lot of rich rich sugar can't believe so much sugar impression or is it today I don't know um, because it was better last time on, on the palette okay last sip and then a few drops of water yeah it's better now in its time I think it's that starting to have all these green elements that are typical from the old Highland single malts some on, some on the table some are not so old single malt, Scottish single malt profile from the 80s 90s uh, maybe even older hard to describe if you haven't tried any but for me uh, yeah my mood today is not praising it as much I won't give scores but if I had to I will give around 90 to this instead of a 92 on my website 90 minus 90 even maybe 88 today uh, because I know what's 
I know, I guess what's inside and it influenced my judgments as well. It's possible, of course, but hard to explain. Um, then the for the other one, we're going to try water, but I will say something like 78 or so you see much less. Just three drops in each. This time I will start by the 43% because I'm afraid to be influenced too much. Uh, I mean that you, you, you understand. I told you. <laughs> Sorry. Ooh. How much it evolves in the glass, it's amazing. The nose, it's definitely better than the palette, like often in old whiskies. Ah, I had al almost some Japanese note, whiskey notes, old Japanese. Amazing. The, the smoke um, becomes to be intertwined now with the smoky element uh, with the maritime element and green elements so we're getting closer now to an old like Evelyn or Port Allen profile but I'm surprised the Kleinish and the Bora doesn't give so much spices there's more spice in the, in the 40 percent version than in the 43 and there's they're less naturally feeling than in this one I don't know interesting it's good because it's diminishing this caramel thing and enhances the spices it's it's some in french i will say it's a, a whiskey très fuyant uh, il faut vraiment aller le chercher so in english i will say it's something that it's sneaky and uh, get, gets away. You really have to dig a lot to, to find nice notes in it. It shouldn't be like that at this, at this extent, I mean. Again, E158, chill filtration, um, ABV 43 is good. There are days where I find it exceptional. There are others like today. I found it still difficult, very good, but difficult. So well, okay, let's finish and give you some final thoughts. On to the 2020, 40%. With a few drops of water, this becomes more gentle. A bit closer to this one. Less artificial. It needed some time as well. But then it's too... Uh, um, it's too sanitized. It's too aseptized. Uh, this one is too, but this one is even more. Um, it's quite frustrating, and for the price, it's, it is not. It is not a, a really good value. Uh, I would go for the cast strength personally, um, but it's too expensive. Or I would go for a forty-three percent if you really want to approach the beauty of the uh, the blue label and the, the Johnny Walker range. Uh, you have to, to find yourself a 43% version, definitely. But then, for 200 euros or so, there's so many other choices. Uh, go get you some. I'm going to try some, but I, I just touch 
my lips on some try some kid in head some north star blends um even for that price compass boxes might be more interesting um then to get something as complex as uh, sophisticated I, I'm sure you you can find something okay it's better now I have some citrus fruit notes some the sugar notes are changing there's some rummy side um, some vanilla is strangely coming in there um, almonds yeah again thanks for your patience to see such long uh, videos thanks a lot for this uh, video to new drum drinker for their sample I'm always curious to compare things uh, thanks and rest in peace my friend George for this uh, and you don't see it but it was given to me in very uh, special circumstances I cannot really tell here but this is what I have with it a whole letter in uh, I was inside of a love of uh, support but he knew at this time he was not going to live too long um, but yeah uh, at least because he liked this and wanted me to get this uh, it was a nice uh, move um, okay <laughs> let's not get emotional or stuff um, again if you have a big wallet go for the 43 percent version if you don't have it go for indie butlers blended whiskies uh, the uh, or uh, johnny walker 18 or shivas 18 or dear wars if you can get the old signature i still have to open it uh, it's it's interesting a bit frustrating as well 40 percent uh the old if you can get yourself the antiquary 30 years old 1977 with a higher abv than this this is interesting uh very interesting with the price i don't know um more in my channel soon and we will go back to shorter uh format of videos a bit shorter let's say <laughs> for single whiskey reviews and stuff um, and a lot of themes some live shows etc stay tuned and hoping you're doing well see you soon cheers